Hi, my name is Anna Hansen, and I'm going to talk to you all about projectile motion. Um, projectile motion, I think, is kind of a special topic um, because it really allows us um, to visualize how functions and their derivatives and integrals translate into three-dimensional space and the real world. Um, we're all familiar with projectile motion to some degree because we've seen it in action. We've thrown a ball or dropped something from a height, and we can apply what we like intuitively know um, about motion to our understanding of mechanics and calculus um, and better understand motion by utilizing some mathematical principles. So as Stewart tells us, concepts like curves and their tangent vectors can be utilized to study the physics of motion. So suppose a particle moves through space so that its position is given by the vector function r of t when t is time. And we can take the derivative of r, and like any derivative um, of r of t, uh, this will tell us the rate of change of r with respect to t. So this measures the rate of change of displacement for a given time. So it's a distance per time measurement. And we know what distance per time is. It's, it's velocity. We're, we're familiar with um, this relationship. So the derivative of r is uh, equivalent to v because um, we can denote velocity as v of t. And furthermore, this second derivative of r, or the derivative of v, will represent the change in velocity, again with respect to time t. So it's how quickly um, the velocity is changing. It's the rate of change of the rate of change. So we know, again, like what this We therefore know that um, our double prime of t is equal to v prime of t, which is equal to a of t. Um, and this makes sense, um, given what we know and what we've just explained about the relationship um, of r and v and a. Uh, this can also be thought of in terms of integrals, the inter which is pretty much the opposite. Um, the integral of a is v, and the integral of v is r. So let's consider um, a particle moving through like a plane on the Earth, and we can denote r, v, and a all as um, vectors with independent x and y components. Um, and these general equations that we have can be used to really further um, our understanding of motion and how r, v, and a relate to one another. So r of t um, can be given as r not x plus v not x times t minus one half a x t squared um, as the x component and r not y plus v not y t minus one half a y t squared as the y component. Um, and this indicates um, like uh, r not and v not both represent um, the original um, starting position or velocity um, of the particle. Um, velocity can be given similarly. Um, velocity, the velocity vector vt can be written as the, um, what is the derivative of rt with respect to t. So v of t is equal, or can be equal to v not x plus axt um, as the x component and v not y plus a y t as the y component. Um, and a of t lastly can be written as the derivative of v of t um, with a x and a y as the components. And you can see um, that the um, sign for the acceleration uh, portion of um, r of t and v of t changes in um, that's really because, um, as we're going to see soon, that A often denotes um, the uh, acceleration due to gravity, um, which is a negative value due to the fact that it's falling downwards, like towards the center of the Earth. Um, so sometimes it's written positively and sometimes it's written negatively. Um, but what's important to consider is that um, the direction of motion and it's always moving towards the ground. So really, um, it should probably be written as v naught x minus axt for the velocity component. But um, 
when considering what we know about units um, as well as uh, integrals and derivatives of these three um, functions, uh, this really makes sense. Um, So, um, as we said earlier, the position units are given by um, like a distance or a length, such as meters velocity um, is that distance per unit time, so like meters per second. Um, and acceleration is the distance per unit time squared, so meters per second squared. And of course, this could uh, use any sort of length or time unit, but um, meters and seconds are what we're most commonly going to look at. And when um, considering the functions that we just looked at, the equations we just looked at, when multiplying um, the portions together, uh, you can see that um, they will result, the um, will have the appropriate units for either um, velocity or um, position. So when you're thinking about the units, it's a good way to kind of check your work and make sure that um, the products that you're getting make sense. So here, um, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, we know that um, one of the assumptions that we oftentimes make when considering projectile motion is that the only um, force acting on a particle is the force of gravity. Um, and we know that the acceleration of gravity, um, the acceleration due to gravity on a particle, like what we're thinking of as a massless particle, um, can be given as negative 9.8 meters per second squared, which is also equal to negative 32 um, feet per second squared if we're going to use feet. So keeping that in mind, what we know about gravity, we know that it only acts in, um, in the y direction. So the acceleration due to gravity has no x component. Therefore, there's um, the velocity of a particle with just a force of gravity acting on it has um, no change in velocity in the x direction. It only changes velocity in the y direction. Um, and this is really, like I think, um, a very important concept. Um, considering or concerning projectile motion. Um, so utilizing um, like that fact, we can rewrite our V and A um, in terms of like what's most commonly used when considering um, a particle in motion with only the force, the outside force of gravity acting upon it. Um, that's given by these equations and you can see that um, there's no uh, change in velocity for the x component and instead of a, we oftentimes use g. So we can also see that um, in these equations, um, instead of a, we can write acceleration as g, um, and the sign of g, like we mentioned earlier, can be important. Sometimes um, g is thought to say like negative 9.8 uh, meters per second squared, and sometimes we think of it as positive 9.8 and write a negative sign within the equation. Um, but the take-home message is that like gravity, of course, acts in a negative y direction. Um, it moves things downwards towards the center of the Earth. Um, so to pay attention to signs and really like use common sense and your intuition in figuring out um, how like what the question is asking and how to write your answer um, and how to do the math. But I hope this has been a good um, introduction to projectile motion. It really is, I think, a fun topic. Um, thanks for listening.